Hello and welcome to The Download, right here at churchmilitant.com, where we deliver the very best in Catholic discussion. I'm Paul Morano. Joining us today are Christine Niles. Christine, Hi. good to have you. And Mr. Brad Eli, Bradley. Paul. We are getting into some heavy duty theology today, so we're bringing up the heavy guns to help us clear things up. But before we do that, today we're talking about conscience. That's not necessarily what Father James Martin says conscience is. And before we do that, here are today's top stories. First, Netflix hemorrhaging viewers. Then, Pennsylvania's ballot fraud. And finally, another statue desecration. Christine. Americans are fleeing Netflix after it sexualized young girls. The streaming platform's cancellation rate grew by a factor of eight since last month. This follows the release of the film Cuties, portraying 11-year-olds performing sexually explicit dances, including bearing their breasts, drawing nationwide outrage. Many of the nation's faithful are calling it child pornography. And it's not just the nation's faithful, it's senators, congressmen, you know, Senator Cruz, uh, has asked the DOJ to investigate, officially investigate, launch an investigation into Netflix over whether or not it, it's airing child porn through Netflix. And as we went over in uh, the download yesterday, they absolutely are because there's a six factor test that the courts use to see whether or not something is actually child porn. And this fil film hits every single one perfectly. It's yeah atrocious, it's outrageous, it is child pornography, and what's even more disgusting is that you have major media outfits like the New York Times, the Atlantic, and various other people trying to justify this by saying, oh, well, it's a coming of age story, and there's a good message, and you guys need to just stop crying about it and just watch the film. No, there is no justification whatsoever any of this, ever. It's both horrible and inevitable, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, we have gone down this road for the past 40 to 50 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, those, those of you who are older than me can remember when premarital sex was first introduced in television. Uh, Christians went crazy. It didn't last too long. All of a sudden they started, you know, ingratiating themselves into it. Homosexuality. I remember the Soap, the, the soap opera. Soap. Billy Crystal. First character, I believe, on television. Homosexual. Yeah. Uh, uproar. For a couple of months. Then all of a sudden, all right, we'll accept that. How long are we going to accept these things? This now we're at uh, child porn, Brad. How are we going to? Are we going to after a few months accept that? Well, Our Lady of Fatima called it. You know, in 1917, fashions will be introduced that will displease the Heavenly Father right. very much. But well, we're way beyond that. And you look around the culture. There's many, many mothers who are allowing their girls to dress like that and act like that, and think it's just fine. That's right. Yeah. So, well, voter fraud is ripe in Pennsylvania. Yesterday, Democratic Governor Tom Wolf said he's allowing mail-in ballots with incorrect signatures to be counted. He's also giving counties up to three weeks before Election Day to start processing the ballots. He claims the rules will prevent valid, ball valid ballots from being discarded, with critics saying it allows fraudulent ones to be processed. Well, this whole mail-in balloting thing, you know, uh, Trump a while ago said this is going to be a joke, the laughing stock of the, of the world. Uh, and it could take even months, he was predicting, for these things to be counted. There's so many opportunities for, for fraudulent balloting here from the post office not delivering, from people opening your ballot that you mail in. This is not changing a sealed your thing, yeah. changing your vote. There are already throughout how many, five, half a million mm -hmm. ballots, 563,000, uh, were thrown out as uh, in the primaries. Yeah. Just Here already in the primaries right. leading yeah. up to this. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy and that you think that this is a legitimate way yeah. to run an election. It is so important that people vote in person. It really is. People need to understand, I mentioned this yesterday as well. In 2016, six million mail-in ballots got lost. Six million. Yeah, I mean, happen. Yeah, so you don't want your vote to get lost. Go vote in person. We also right. have to talk about the Catholic vote out there. Half of you guys aren't even registered out there. Good and point. you know, if this country's going down tubes like cuties, mm. how does that happen? Because yeah. you get people who are representing you in office who think this is okay and green light it. Yeah. Well, when your culture goes down, you need to blame yourself for right. not registering. Half of the yeah. Catholics are not even registered you know what? in this Look, country. You don't vote. It, it, you know, some Catholics are like, well, you know, I'll just stay home and pray about it. Okay, pray, but act. Pray and act. I mean, aura et labora, right? Pray That's the Benedictine. You know, and it's just, it's yeah. just wrong to take this well, idea that, well, God doesn't really care, you know, that you know, God cares about how we vote. That's how we exercise our faith in the public yeah. square. You've got to get out yeah, and vote. Yeah, it has real consequences. It's, it's yeah. definitely a moral act that we're going to be answerable to uh, one day. 
Another Catholic statue was smashed in Texas. On Tuesday, an image of Jesus was bashed to pieces inside St. Patrick Cathedral in El Paso. This follows a series of holy imagery being smashed by leftists over the summer. The statue stood there for nearly 90 years. Police report a suspect has been detained, but a motive remains unclear. You know, hatred if you blew up a, a Jewish synagogue. There'd be uh, yeah. probably overnight. Or a Muslim mosque. Yeah, well, or a Muslim hatred mosque. for God is 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 continuing. Uh, we saw it throughout this entire summer, and you're right. They're not they're not focusing on. They're not targeting other religions. They're targeting yeah. Christian. They know what they're doing. They know who their enemy is. Exactly. And the masks are coming off, especially now with the increased riots. There's a, a Twitter video that's gone viral of a BLM protest. They're marching and they're literally chanting F your Jesus. I can't mm. say the word obviously, right. but that's, they're right. chanting that over yeah. and over and over again. That, that's pretty clear what their agenda is. Well, the anti-Catholic bigotry has been in this country for so many years that people are just kind of accustomed to it, that we're supposed to tolerate mm. all of that. And once again, if we don't act, if you don't have the right people in office to call that out and to bring people to justice, and how does that not happen? You don't get out and vote. Exactly. So get out and vote and actually exercise your God-given duty to, yeah. uh, to put your, the right people in charge. And we are around 25% of the electorate, so get out there and vote. Yeah, yeah if they but actually exercise the vote, Catholics would swing the election every time. And it's totally shameful that the Democrats and Joe Biden will not condemn Antifa or Black Lives Matter by name. Yeah. Now they'll put out vague statements about, oh, the riots are bad and violence and all that, but when they're asked to name them, they yes. will not do so. In fact, Senator Ted Cruz challenged um, Senate Democrats uh, and you can actually see the video of this saying, please condemn Antifa by name. You know what the Democrats did? They got up and they walked out. They would not condemn them by name. Totally cowardly. Well, by, with uh, Trump's uh, latest approval ratings at 52%, just peaking there, uh, he may get into office. But I'm telling you, the Catholics who didn't get out and vote, who have all this uh, moral hemorrhaging going on in our country, are still going to be answerable to God for not getting out there and helping out. It's interesting. Yeah. You say that um, Catholics have been uh, discriminated against uh, since our country's founding, and that's true. But it, it began with Protestants. They were the ones discriminating against Catholics. Now you have, you have this entire secular humanist movement, this progressive movement, this leftist movement, which we can, we can call Marxism, really. Atheists. It's, and that's its, that's its core. It's yeah. atheism versus Catholicism. And that's where all yeah, the hate that's is. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, that's exactly. All right, that's it for today's top stories. When we come back, Catholic conscience. What is it? We'll get into it right after this. That was one of his big things. Last year was one of the biggest crises in the world today are plastics in the ocean. It's a big problem again, and the once mighty Jesuits have generally descended into moral degeneracy, and this includes their embrace of homosexuality. He said, in his opinion, the majority of the bishops go to hell. This is really what the left does. It takes some questionable teachings of certain people and then twists them to their own liking. Exclusively at churchmilitant.com. Fake Catholic Joe Biden is trying to gain the Catholic vote, and heterodox priests, bishops, and religious are trying to help him. Pro-sodomy Jesuit Father James Martin is claiming a supremacy of conscience even over church teaching. And when no objective measure of truth is recognized outside of ourselves, the most terrible things can occur. Church Militant's Joseph Enders tells us about the promotion of homosexual predation in California. California is supporting a law that protects gay sex offenders. San Diego Mayor Kevin Falconer ripped Governor Gavin Newsom over the weekend for signing a law allowing adults who sodomize boys as young as 14 to remain off the National Sex Offender Registry. Quote, as a parent, I'm appalled that last night our governor signed a law maintaining a 24-year-old can have sex with a 14-year-old and it not be considered predatory. It is discriminatory against LGBTQ young people. The and bill so was proposed by homosexual is, state senator sure Scott Weiner, who claimed his bill is to give gay sex abusers the same legal protections as straight offenders. The law allows judges to determine whether or not child predators should be placed on sex offender lists given the age gap of the victim and offender is within 10 years or less. Though California is offering the same legal protections to heterosexual offenders, critics like Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez think the law goes in the wrong direction. Quote, 
I cannot in my mind as a mother understand how sex between a 24-year-old and a 14-year-old could ever be consensual. How could it ever not be a registrable offense? Homosexual predation is common in LGBT circles, with 46% of all gay men having fallen prey to molestation in their own youth, while only 7% for heterosexuals. Loosening laws on statutory rape harkens back to the gay liberation movement of the 1960s, where Philadelphia publisher Mark Siegel founded the first group for gay teens called Gay Youth, which advocated abolishing the age of consent. With homosexualist leftists in government passing laws demanding leniency on sex abusers under the guise of equality, the faithful are worrying there's a hidden agenda. What do we want? Joseph Enders, Church Militant, Detroit. So this is what happens when you allow your conscience to sort of go wild and not hew to what the magisterium tells you. Craziness and evil like that. But you know, we're focusing on conscience today and a lot of Catholics are very confused. They're being given different messages about who can I vote for, who can I not vote for, what does the Catholic Church tell me about how do I form my conscience. And of course you've got people like Father James Martin and Cardinal Tobin and others you know, coming out and basically saying yes, you can vote with a clear conscience for a Democrat, even if they're pro-abortion, pro-LGBT, pro-radical, gender ideology, all of that extremely anti-Catholic stuff. Of course they're wrong, completely wrong. But the latest scandal comes of course from Cardinal Joseph Tobin of Newark, New Jersey, a notorious pro-LGBT Cardinal. But he just uh, hosted, he just took part in a panel discussion hosted by Boston College, and this is what he said, among other things, quote, I think that a person in good conscience could vote for Mr. Biden. I frankly, in my own way of thinking, have a more difficult time with the other option, meaning Trump. Well, yeah, your own way of thinking, it's not Catholic thinking. Right. Um, you know, clearly, nobody can vote for a pro-abortion Democrat, and be secure in their salvation, quite frankly. I mean, you have to be very worried about yourself and your eternal salvation if you are voting openly for a pro-abortion Democrat, and even more so as a cardinal, a shepherd of the church, who's meant to be forming souls and guiding them, coming right out and saying this. Uh, that's a terrible thing, and he's completely wrong. Father James Martin, of course, someone that we've highlighted many times, once again out there with his false rhetoric, trying to justify votes for Democrats, for Biden. So he's been on tweeting spree, talking about how your conscience can do this, etc. One of his latest tweets, he actually quotes Thomas Aquinas, quote, and as this article notes, St. Thomas Aquinas famously said he'd rather be excommunicated than go against his conscience, one's own conscience, which must be obeyed before all else, if necessary, even against the requirement of ecclesiastical authority. Okay, we have to clarify that. First of all, that's misquoting, that's taking a quote out of context. St. Thomas Aquinas would never ever advocate any position against the magisterium. You have to distinguish between the magisterium, which is the official teaching of the church, versus ecclesiastical authority, meaning an individual bishop who may be counseling you to do something that's immoral. That's what he's saying there. If, a, if a, uh, uh, your superior, bishop, whatever, is telling you to do something that is sinful, you have the right to say, no, I can't do that because my conscience tells me to. But you don't have the right to reject the magisterium of the church, and he would never do that. So for Father Martin to rally St. Thomas Aquinas to his cause is totally dishonest. Here's another tweet from Father Martin, this time trying to rally Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger to his cause. Of course, Ratzinger became Pope Benedict. Quote, conscience confronts the individual with a supreme and ultimate tribunal and one which in the last resort is beyond the claim of external social groups, even of the official church. Once again, he is quoting Pope Benedict out of context. Here, any time the church talks about conscience, it's always talking about a well-informed conscience, informed by the teachings of the Catholic Church. It's not, I just get to think whatever I want, and that's my conscience, but that's kind of what Father Martin is saying that, yeah, just go with your conscience. Whatever you believe in your heart is telling you the right thing to do, even though that means voting for the pro-abortion, radical gender ideology guy. No, he's totally wrong. People don't listen to Father Martin. Well, Father Martin, with the article you're referring to there, he actually tweeted out, he said, this is the, he hearkened back recently to a 2015 article that came out in America Magazine, where this, he's the editor at large, and it was titled, Following Faithfully, the Catholic Way to choose the good. Now, 
there's, in this article, it has so many different ways of blurring these moral lines, which we're talking about. You're bringing up these blurring of moral lines and not trying to help people understand. First of all, he comes off, well, there's two major Catholic approaches. One, John Paul II, and the other, uh, revisionist theologian, Bernard Herring. Bernard Herring was out there rallying against John Paul II for so many years, especially when Veritati Splendor comes out there. Mm -hmm. Right then and there, you're saying, wait, 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 wait. You've got one revisionist, you can put in there, dissident yes. theologian, who he actually admits in the article, because this article, he says, oh, this is the article, read this article to understand conscience. The article says that Bernard Herring was diametrically opposed to magisterial teaching. Okay, so right there, we can just, if you're Catholic, remember the title, The Catholic Way to Choose. When we're talking about all this conscience stuff, we're really talking about a very narrow spectrum. We're talking about Catholics right here. We're talking about Catholics voting right now. We're not talking about a caveman just looking at nature and trying to figure things out. We're talking about Catholics who call themselves Catholic, who identify as Catholic. Since I can remember, everybody's talking about conscience, follow your conscience. No one, including in this article, talks about your responsibility to inform your conscience. And if you're Catholic, you need to inform your conscience according to Catholic principles. No one ever talks about that. If you don't, you're following a blind guide. 1791, actually, in the Catechism says you're, you can be responsible. If you're not in somehow invincible ignorance, you're responsible for forming your conscience. And if you're rejecting church, church teaching in order to go contrary to church teaching, you're responsible for that. So there is a blind guide that you can have. You can have an, a deformed conscience, which we call erroneously formed conscience, where I'm just following a bunch of rationalizations. I gotta be me, I gotta look out for number one, dog eat dog world, and all this type of thing. Don't, they don't bring up any of these things. Then with the Catholic, um, the, uh, you can have a deadened conscience. If you once knew this and you sinfully acted against it over and over and over, you're deadening your conscience. You don't have a twinge of conscience, which we call guilt. Thank God for guilt, because it brings us back to confession, saying we're sorry to one another and to God. And if you didn't have guilt, if you had dead in conscience, you're truly in a deplorable state. Yeah. They don't bring up any of those distinctions in this article, and actually they blur all of them. Bernard Herring was actually saying, well, you, know, you need to act out of love. And uh, while well, John Paul II and very Thomas Smith said the individual acts of sin are actually contrary to love. Yes. So we'll talk about more of that later. Yeah, um, I mean, we are formed today in the media and academia outside of the church in relativism, relativism and utilitarianism, which are absolutely both contrary to the church's understanding of the moral law and of conscience. So let's go a little beneath the surface, if we can, to what the church does teach about conscience. Let's go to Catechism 1776. For a man in his heart uh, has in his heart a law inscribed by God, this conscience, is man's most sacred core and sanctuary. There is alone, there he is alone with God whose voice echoes in the depths. So what is this law that is in the heart of every human being? Well, tradition calls it the natural law. It is the order of creation by which God created us as rational beings in his image in order to understand how to behave according to his will. It's etched in the, in the heart of every human being. This is why most people do the right thing uh, on basic things. Uh, the basic tenets of the moral law are etched in people's hearts. When you get into more difficult areas, then there's disagreements. Um, this voice that echoes, it echoes through human nature, it echoes through the collective reason of civilization and if you're a person with faith, it echoes through the church in the divine voice of Christ through his established magisterium so that we can know without a doubt what is true and what is not. Let's go to Catechism 1780. The dignity of the human person implies and requires uprightness of moral conscience. The moral truth is recognized practically and concretely by the prudence judgments of conscience. Well, a couple words there to talk about here, dignity and prudence. Uh, these are all important. Human dignity depends on, as it says here, a well-formed conscience. You are uh, 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 lacking in human dignity if you, if you lack in a well-formed conscience. Um, 
Let's go to, uh, since we're running out of time, 1790. Here's an important one. Catechism 1790, a human being must always obey the certain judgment of his conscience. And that's an important one. If he were to deliberately act against it, he would condemn himself. Yet, it can happen that moral conscience remains in ignorance and makes erroneous judgments about acts. Well, a couple things to say here, because on the surface, it seems like it's an apparent contradiction that's going on here. And we need to understand how both of these ideas fit together. Number one, you must follow your conscience. You must follow what you genuinely believe to be right. You must. You are ob obliged to follow that, even if it's objectively wrong. Because before God, you sincerely believe act X is right, you must do X. Now, you might find out later that X is wrong. But that is important, and I think this is what the church means by you must follow your conscience. Number two, um, one is guilty of sin if a malformed conscience uh, is, occur, occurs through laziness or you know, uh, it's out of your comfort zone or stubbornness of will. Uh, you are culpable for your malformed conscience. At the moment you choose, you're, speaking, you're, 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 you're with God and saying, I genuinely believe X is right, even though it may not be. However, God, you are committing sin in as much as you, by your own free will, through your own fault, have a malformed conscience because you did not form it according to the objective truth. For a Catholic, of course, that is scripture, tradition, and the magisterium. Right. Yeah, we're talking about certainty, a certain conscience. A lot of people out there, well, how'd you get your certain conscience? You know, well, I'm a gangster. It's like, you know, us against the world. Really, that's your certain conscience right there. Um, when we're talking about this article, though, that, that uh, Martin tweeted out, St. Thomas Aquinas is quoted in there, as Christine was bringing up, there's some little tripwires in there. When the church has ignorance of true facts and you have a clear conscience and it's not about infallible church teaching. Yeah. So, you know, the three children at Fatima are urged by some ecclesiastic to go ahead and deny the vision that they actually had right, right. there. Right. Well, that doesn't involve infallible church teaching and it's, they, they see what they saw and it's, it's, there's some contrary thing. But then the article just kind of blurs away from all that and just starts talking in general. Therefore, we have the right to reject everything in the church. Right. Uh, 20, CCC 2039, Catechism says, personal conscience and reason should not be set in opposition to the moral law or the magisterium of the church. So you can't pit them against each other as a Catholic. Yeah. There is a difference between ecclesiastical law and the divine law. The divine law is immutable. It's infallible. One has to obey that. Ecclesiastical law, like both of you are trying to explain, is when the church um, promulgates a discipline or, or, or continues a custom or a, uh, a wayward bishop says, do X when you know X is wrong or sinful. Then you, then you have freedom of conscience to go against that. I just wanted to back up one thing you are saying, the responsibility on malformed. This is Catechism 1791. Ignorance. Oh, I was ignorant. I didn't know any better. Well, this ignorance can often be imputed to personal responsibility, right. says the Catechism. Personal responsibility means you're responsible for that. This is the yeah. case when a man takes little trouble to find out what is true and good, or when a conscience is by degrees almost blinded through the habit of committing sin. You deadened your conscience. 1791, remember that because you're guilty for deadening your conscience or not taking the pains as a Catholic to form your conscience according to Catholic teaching. This is called right. voluntary ignorance versus invincible ignorance where through no fault of your own, you happen to be ignorant. Right. All right, that is our discussion for today. We'll be right back with a wrap up right after this. Church Militant is working behind the scenes with law enforcement and whistleblowers. It's a classic case of putting the fox in charge of the hen house. To help expose corruption and abuse, all with the goal of removing, prosecuting, or, if necessary, imprisoning compromised clergy. Investigators, law enforcement, whistleblowers, we invite you to work with us in Church Militant's action arm. While God gave us our consciences as a guide, He expects, expects us to form them according to the teaching of the church, which are the teachings of Christ. While everyone has natural moral law written into them by God, 
Catholics have the obligation to use all the tools at their disposal to inform their consciences about the truth. One way to do this is by becoming a premium subscriber and you'll have access to thousands of hours of videos that help you become a better Catholic. That's it for today. We'll see you again here tomorrow on the download. God bless you.